All right, so every creative process in filmmaking or photography ultimately results in data, video files, photos, project files, and so on. And if you do creative work like this for a living, this data is in fact even your bread and butter. Without the data, you're not getting paid. And despite that, most creatives, myself included, don't think carefully about where or how their data is stored. And I know this is not the sexiest topic, but trust me when I say that it is a super important one. So my old workflow would go something like this. I would shoot some footage, insert the SD card into my Mac, dump the footage onto an SSD, edit from an SSD, export, and once that SSD got full, I would copy old project files to an external hard drive that would then live in a drawer until I might need to dig up some old files. And eventually that HDD would get full as well, I would buy a new HDD, and the cycle basically continues. But over time, this is just not going to be sustainable. I would end up with tons of hard drives and also issues trying to locate old files or projects, having to look through all these different drives. Also, portable SSDs and HDDs have a limited lifespan. At one point, they will die and the data might be gone. Which brings me to another problem with this whole system and that is reliability, the risk of losing data. This old workflow has no kind of backup or safety net, so if a drive fails, all the data and all the projects would basically be lost. So it is time for a change. And I actually think I found a solution, a network attached storage, otherwise known as a NAS. Now, even though this video is sponsored by Synology and they sent me one of their units, getting a NAS and working out my data management was on the top of my to-do list by the end of this year. And Synology being one of the leading brands when it comes to network attached storage, it just made a whole lot of sense and honestly, the timing couldn't have been better. Now let's start with the basics though. What is a NAS? It's basically a box of multiple hard drives acting as one. So the capacity depends on how many and what size drives you install. And this NAS stays online 24 seven and can be accessed either locally or over the internet. So aside from having a giant data storage system, which you can access directly from your computer at your desk, you can also access all your files remotely. You can kind of think of it as your own personal cloud. Except instead of paying monthly fees for Google Drive or iCloud, all of your data is stored locally, right on your own drives. And the best thing about that is that you are not paying monthly bills that get bigger as you need more storage. Because if you shoot a lot of 4K or even 6K or 8K video, cloud storage can really start to add up. Let's say for example, you're paying $10 a month for two terabytes of Google Drive cloud storage. That's $120 a year. If you're having to move up to something like 30 terabytes though, that could easily be about $250 a month or almost $3,000 a year. So very quickly, that'll be the cost of just buying a NAS. Now I know a NAS can sound intimidating or maybe even overkill, especially for solo creators. And that is honestly what I thought at first myself, but I promise you I'm going to simplify things for you and you'll see that this can completely change and improve your workflow and data management as it did for me. The setup I'm working with is a Synology DS1525+, Plus, which is a five bay NAS. In there, I've got five 20 terabyte drives, which comes down to around 70 to 80 terabytes of usable capacity because I have these configured in RAID 5. So real quick, without getting into too much detail, I want to explain the benefits of a RAID 5 configuration. One is that you're getting faster transfer speeds because the data is spread across multiple drives and accessed in parallel. The second is data protection. If one drive fails, none of the data is lost. The NAS automatically rebuilds the missing data once a new drive is installed. All right, now when you order a NAS like this one, you'll get the NAS itself, and then you've got your hard drives. Installing the drives into the DS1525 Plus was really easy to do and you actually don't need any kind of tools. You pop out the tray by just flicking it open. Then there are these side plastics which you just take off and these are going to hold the hard drive in place. Next, you place the hard drive in the tray and pop those side pieces back on to secure the hard drive. Lastly, you slide it back into the bay and you're pretty much done. The DS1525 Plus also comes with this set of keys that allow you to lock the base, which is great for a little extra security or if you, for example, have kids around. 
Now an important note here, even though this is a five bay NAS and I am installing five hard drives, you don't have to fill the whole bay. You can also start off with just two or three drives, for example. So like I said, this setup now gets me around 70 terabytes of storage, but the DS1525 Plus has two connections on the back for expansion units, which basically means if I ever run out of storage on these five drives, I'm able to add another 10 drives to the system, totaling a whopping 300 terabytes of storage. And at the bottom of the NAS, there are two slots for M.2 NVMe SSD drives, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. And that's pretty much it. The NAS is now ready to go. So this is where the NAS is going to live in the office here. And from here, I have it connected to the router. And then the other Ethernet port is going through the Ethernet port on my Mac Studio here. And for anyone wondering how loud this is going to be, if you have this in your office, like uh, right here, let me just give you an unscientific um, loudness test here. I'll just hold the mic. It's not that loud and uh, I don't think it's gonna bother anyone. Setting up the NAS was also really easy to do. On the computer, you just go to find.synology.com and that's going to locate the NAS. Then it just takes you through all the steps to configure the NAS. The system has this kind of setup wizard where you simply go over a few steps to set up your storage pool, which in my case is this RAID 5 configuration. All right, so one thing I wanted to figure out was if I would actually be able to edit off the NAS. So I went ahead and did a few speed tests for different setups to see what the difference is and if it makes sense to actually edit straight from the NAS. First off, I wanted to test those standard external drives that I've been using to archive all my past projects. And I was getting around 250 megabytes per second write and around 100 megabytes per second read speed. Then I tested the NAS connected directly to my Mac Studio over the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection. And here I was getting around 250 megabytes per second read and write speeds, which would work for standard video editing. Now comparing that to a standard SSD like this Samsung T7, we're getting around 800 megabytes per second write and 600 megabytes per second read. Another option is to use a much faster M.2 SSD. For example, this Samsung 990 Pro. And I've installed it in this Acasis TB501 Pro NVMe enclosure, which has Thunderbolt 5. This one has active cooling through a built-in fan, which helps keep transfer rates stable even under heavy load. And that means that on my Mac Studio, which supports Thunderbolt 5, I'm seeing insane speeds of around six gigabytes per second. On a MacBook Pro M3 Max, which supports Thunderbolt 4, it still peaks at around three gigabytes per second, which is still very impressive. Now, if you wanna check out this Acasis enclosure, I will have a link for you down below. Now, I could still improve the speeds I'm getting from the NAS. So I currently am using that 2.5 gigabit ethernet port on my DS1525 Plus, but it could actually support a 10 gigabit ethernet. This is an additional accessory Synology offers, and it is an upgrade that I will be doing real soon because my Mac Studio also has a 10 gigabit ethernet port, switching to that connection should give me even faster speeds. And if your computer doesn't have a 10 gigabit ethernet port built in, you can get one of those adapters. So there are these Thunderbolt to ethernet adapters that let you take full advantage of those faster read and write speeds the 10 gig ethernet can offer. Now I can also add M.2 SSD drives to those slots at the bottom of the NAS. And that would either allow me to add an SSD storage pool or an SSD cache, which would improve speeds as well. The only downside here is that currently only Synology M.2 SSDs are supported. They recently did do an update to their operating system, which allows third-party HDDs and normal SSDs, but no third-party M.2 SSDs, which honestly is a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, what does this all mean for my workflow? Well, I will mostly be editing bigger projects off this Samsung 990 Pro M.2 SSD, just because that will give me the best results and fastest workflow in something like DaVinci Resolve. But instead of then archiving finished projects only on these standard HDD drives, I can archive everything onto the NAS, and that has a few advantages. One being that it's always running and always connected to my Mac. So I just drag and drop a finished projects folder and it's done. Second is that those files, that data is now being managed by the NAS. So like we talked about before, if anything goes wrong with any of the drives, the RAID configuration is going to be able to protect all of my data. 
The third advantage is something that I'll talk a bit more about in just a second, but that is backup. So besides having these files on the NAS, the NAS is actually going to perform automatic backups onto an external HDD, so I don't have to worry about doing it myself. Advantage number four is that my entire archive, so all these projects and video files, are easily accessible from my Mac Finder. So I don't have to go and search through a bunch of different external drives, trying to remember where I stored a certain file. Number five is that it's accessible by multiple users. So if there's another person wanting to work with the same files, we can both access those files at the same time through the NAS, something that wouldn't be possible with an external drive. And number six is that these files are also accessible from anywhere in the world. Because the NAS is plugged into the home network, it actually becomes a private cloud. So if you are, for example, collaborating with editors working on the other side of the world, they can now have access to those files immediately. So for anyone using traditional cloud services for remote access, this kind of system reduces monthly fees and gives you complete ownership of your data because everything lives on your own NAS and not a third party server. For me, this external access is great when I'm not working in the office. So sometimes I work from home and now I can easily have access to those files without needing an actual physical drive. Now I still want to quickly talk about the backup system I currently have with this Synology NAS. So on the DS1525 Plus, you'll see that there is a USB port on the back right here. I can plug a regular external hard drive into this, something like a WD MyBook. And within the Synology DSM software, I can connect this hard drive and use Hyper Backup to create an automated backup. So I always have one of these HDDs connected to the NAS and it's actively backing up my current project folders until it's full and then I can set up a new one. That way the data doesn't only live on the NAS, but there is a second copy on this external drive. Now I know this might not be the absolute best 100% safe backup system. However, for my use case, it really does what I need. All right, so should you consider buying a NAS? Is it worth the investment? Well, the short answer is yes. If you are a filmmaker or photographer or anyone whose work depends on reliable data, a NAS is absolutely worth it. A NAS is basically a solution to three very real problems that almost every creative runs into. Messy storage, unreliable drives, and zero backups. So it keeps your data organized, protected, and accessible, whether it's at your own desk or halfway across the world. And more importantly, Importantly, a NAS fits into your workflow quietly in the background. So you shoot, you edit, you archive, and then it handles all your data and backups automatically. However, is it necessary for absolutely everyone? Well, probably not. If you only shoot the occasional photo or you're editing small social videos here and there, then a couple of portable SSDs or HDDs will do the job just fine. But if you're shooting consistent client work, long form content, or if you're simply tired of juggling a pile of external external drives and paying for cloud storage, a NAS is probably one of the smartest upgrades you can make. Anyway, if you want to check out the Synology DS1525+, Plus, there will be a link in the video description. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.